The potential civil applications of CTBTO data are very promising, in particular in the area of disaster warning and mitigation. Tsunami warning centers have asked the CTBTO to relay the relevant data, and these are already making a valuable contribution to tsunami disaster mitigation. Leading experts in earthquake and tsunami monitoring agree that the CTBTO provides a speedier, more reliable and more secure route for data communication than any other global data collecting system. An important advantage for tsunami warning systems and disaster mitigation where timeliness is critical. Data generated in the monitoring of volcanic activity and the data resulting from atmospheric transport modeling could help civilian aviation to stay clear of dangerous ash plumes. Wind field forecasts could mitigate against hazardous airborne material. The establishment of the CTBTO's unique global system of monitoring stations began in 1997 and is nearing completion. To build the stations, CTBTO specialists had to venture into some of the most remote places in the world. Their job was to set up highly sensitive monitoring instruments and train the local staff to operate and maintain the equipment. In 2007, over 200 of the monitoring stations were sending data to the International Data Center in Vienna. Three waveform technologies, seismic, infrasound and hydroacoustic, provide continuous high-quality data. Seismometers measure waves in the Earth. Infrasound sensors measure waves in the air that are inaudible to the human ear. And hydrophones measure sound waves in the oceans. What makes CTBTO data unique is that waveform data are processed together, fusing the three waveform technologies. These waveform results are then merged with data from radionuclide detectors. Radionuclide monitoring is key for fulfilling the treaty mandate, the ultimate verification of nuclear explosions. The high-quality monitoring station on the rooftop of the Vienna International Center is an example of the 80 radionuclide stations being established to measure radioactive particles in the air. With the radionuclide data, technical experts will be able to detect the smoking gun of a nuclear explosion. This animation shows how radioactive emissions spread from the Fukushima nuclear power plant following the devastating earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan on 11th of March 2011. CTBTO's radionuclide monitoring stations, highlighted here as purple diamonds, recorded and tracked the unfolding crisis to keep authorities informed. It starts at the Takasaki radionuclide station, around 200 kilometers away from the troubled plant. Within four days, the dispersion of minuscule amounts of radioactive isotopes were detected in eastern Russia and then traveled to the west coast of the United States. Mika Nikonen, CTBTO head, scientific methods. We have to stress always that, uh, that these detection levels uh, which we saw are not harmful for human beings as uh, our detection capability is uh, at least one billion times lower to the level what is harmful for human beings. By day 15, traces from the accident in Fukushima were detectable all across the Northern Hemisphere where it remained with the equator initially acting as a dividing line between the northern and southern air masses. But in a little over a month, traces from the release had reached the southern hemisphere. Japan, 11th of March, 2011. 
A magnitude 9 earthquake rocks the country. CTBTO's monitoring stations around the globe record the event. In the seconds and minutes after that earthquake, the acoustic energy or the elastic energy from, from that earthquake spread around the world and was picked up, recorded by all the IMS stations, uh, specific, and more impo importantly the seismic stations and the hydroacoustic stations. The data from those stations is transmitted here in, to here in Vienna and then it's immediately transmitted from Vienna out to the Sami warning centres where they can use that data for their Sami warning purposes. At the Earthquake and Tsunami Center of Japan's Meteorological Agency in Tokyo, aftershocks from the earthquake mean that staff are on constant alert to issue tsunami warnings if necessary. After the March 11 event, uh, the seismic activity has become very high. And as you, see, you have seen here, so many aftershocks. We are using the, the IMS data from 25 stations. The IMS data is maintained by the PTS, uh, CTBT or, uh, and uh, it's a kind of a very well maintained and uh, guaranteed data and the transmission time is very fast so yes uh, it's one of the most reliable data. But the force of the March tsunami was devastating. More than 20,000 died in the onslaught. It wiped away towns and crippled the Fukushima nuclear power plant. <laughs> Takasaki Station, 200 kilometers away from Fukushima, was the first international monitoring system station to detect radioactive materials released from the stricken nuclear plant. Actually, the, the first detection was not the radiation in the filter. It, the radiation entered uh, the Takasaki Station and, and the system was detecting the radiation in the background. Well, this was telling us uh, that there's clearly a severe damage happening in the reactor site. There was no question about that. Yeah, we saw uh, quite unusual uh, scenery on this window. The, this window almost uh, became uh, red, uh, both uh, sample and uh, background. That means uh, um, quite a huge amount of radioactive xenon uh, is inside the sample and background. The effects of the earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident showed up on all IMS systems. At radionuclide stations, for example, more than 1,600 detections were recorded from Fukushima. The system is so sensitive it can record radioactive levels at least one billion times lower than those harmful to human beings. With atmospheric transport modeling, we were then able to track the movement of the plume which eventually went to the U.S. and Canada and Europe and throughout the uh, Northern Hemisphere. Now, this data was made available to our member states. And because of their high reliability, there was sufficient confidence among our member states to utilize the data in providing guidance to their respective governments about radiation protection implications for members of the public. The CTBTO data sharing system is transparent and it is equal. During the Fukushima crisis, some 1,200 institutions, including public health authorities, had access to CTBTO data in real time. This was really tragic for, uh, for Japanese people. The dam damage and, uh, and the suffering of the human beings is, is, the, is the enormous. But it was also a big test, a stress test for our whole system of CTPTO. And, and this was a proof that it is working extremely well in the stressful situation like this.